Welcome to module 48 of Point Set Topology course, part 1. So today, we will continue the study of largeness properties. One property we study, namely Frechet spaces. Now, today it will be Hausdorff spaces. Once again, similar to what we did for Frechet spaces, but this time only four equivalent conditions. So I will make a statement on a topological space X. The following conditions are equivalent. Given two distinct points X and Y, there exist open sets UX comma UI in X such that X is in UX y is in ui and ux intersection ui is empty so this is also stated like every pair of distinct points can be separated by open sets the second condition is for every topological space z and for every pair of continuous functions alpha beta from Z to X, the set Z belonging to Z such that alpha Z equal to beta Z is a closed subset of Z. Third condition for every topological space Y and for every continuous map from Y to X, the graph of F which we denote by gamma f is closed in y cross x. Remember graph of s is nothing but set of points y comma f y. The fourth condition is a very simple condition. The diagonal x comma x as x belongs to x inside x cross x with product topology is closed. That is a closed subset. So let us go through the equivalence of these four statements first. So starting with the two points, distinct points can be separated by open sets. I want to show that set of all points that so set alpha z equal to beta z is closed whenever alpha and beta are continuous functions from z to x. Same thing as saying that set of points wherein alpha z is not equal to beta z, that is an open set. All right. Alpha z and beta z are points of x. Alpha z is not equal to beta z implies, you can apply the previous uh, condition one. You will find a U containing alpha Z and V containing or U alpha Z and U beta Z open subsets such that their intersection is empty. If the intersection is empty, their inverse images will be also open subsets which are empty. In intersection will be empty. They will be also disjoint. That just means that for any point inside alpha inverse of u z, uh, u alpha z, okay, and any other point inside beta inverse, alpha will never be equal to beta. So that is how you get that the complement is open, okay. So that is, I am repeating it here, put a equal to all z such that alpha z is not equal to beta z. So we want to show that it is open. Take a point Z inside A. By 1 we get open subsets U and V such so that alpha Z is U, beta Z is in V and they are disjoint. 
alpha and beta are continuous, we get open subset alpha inverse u, beta inverse v in z, both containing the point z. And the point z because alpha z belongs to u and beta z belongs to v. Therefore, when you take the intersection, z belongs to intersection, okay, then take a point, take alpha of that, it will be inside u, beta of that will be inside v. So, they are not equal, so that is a subset of A. Okay. So, for points, if these may intersect, then this is what happens. <laughs> because I am not taking inverse image under the same map, those different maps are there. Well, that is a common point, that is a neighborhood now. That neighborhood is contained inside A, that is the whole idea. Second statement implies third statement. For every topological space Y and for every continuous function F from Y to X, the graph gamma F contained inside Y cross X is closed. Okay. So this is what we want to show. Recall that a graph is just nothing but points y comma f y y belong to y. This is a subset of y cross x. So let us take z as y cross x itself. Okay, and consider two functions alpha of y x is equal to f y, which is second projection here, and beta of y x is equal to x. Okay y x is f y from here gamma and beta of y x is x. Okay, second projection swallowed by alpha and for, for alpha and beta. So these are my alpha and beta now and z is y cross x. Both are continuous and we have put y comma x such that alpha y x is equal to beta y x. Then what is it? First coordinate is y. The second coordinate, the y comma x is x. This beta. This is second coordinate beta here. That's equal to f y. So this coordinate is f y means it is gamma gamma f. Okay. Points were in alpha y equal to beta y. So there is a closed subset of y cross x. Okay. See, you can directly prove 1 implies 3, but it's not good. I want to prove 2 implies 3. That's why I have to do this. Take a special case. 2 is true for all z and take a special z equal to y cross x and alpha equal to this way. Now, 3 implies 4, I have to show. Delta x is the diagonal. The diagonal is nothing but graph of the identity map x comma x. So apply 3 to the case where you know, y equal to x and f is identity. So diagonal is closed. Okay. Now 4 implies 1. So that's also easy. If x is not equal to y, we see that x, y is not on the diagonal. Okay, the diagonal is closed means the complement is open. So x comma y is in the open subset. Is open in where? In the product topology, right? So there must be an open basic open sets u comma v, right? Such that x, y belongs to u cross v contained inside delta x, uh, x cross x minus delta x. That will mean that u cross v intersection delta x is empty. This is the same thing as saying that u intersection v is empty. Okay. What is the meaning of u cross v intersection delta x is empty? 
take a point here. The same point here you have to take to be inside delta x. Okay. Then only you will get non-empty set, uh, something non-empty. If you cannot do that, that means any point here cannot be taken as point here, they, they are disjoint. And it's this effect only if actually. This can be used in many other places also. It's a purely set theory, but it is quite useful here. Okay, so that completes the definition of the completes the equivalence of these four conditions, and we make a definition. A space is called Hausdorff if it satisfies any one of the conditions, and hence all of the conditions. Okay. So let us make some immediate remarks here. The very first thing is, you know that every metric space is Hausdorff. The topology coming from a metric is always Hausdorff. Because given two distinct points, you can take the distance between them and take the half of that and take the open ball, they will be disjoint. The second example is the cofinite topology on an infinite set is not Hausdorff. Indeed, the cofinite topology has a fantastic property that any two non empty open sets intersect. Of course, I have to take infinite set. The finite set, cofinite topology is not very interesting. That will be discrete set. That will be Hausdorff, of course. Okay, as soon as infinite set, an open set, non-empty open set means its complement is finite. Therefore, two non-empty open sets cannot be disjoint. An important property of Hausdorff space is that every sequence in it has at most one limit point. A sequence may not converge, that you know, but if converges, the limit is unique. So this was one of the properties which you have been all the time using and you, have, you are familiar with from the real analysis and from metric space also we are very Okay. So that is one of the motivations to keep this Hausdorffness property of, of metric spaces and make it a, a axiom for some topological spaces. If not the metric, let us at least keep this property. Mm -hmm. That is the motivation. Now we start mixing up some of these you know, properties. The first thing is every compact subset of a Hausdorff space is closed. Okay, this is a very, uh, very good uh, thing, but later on, we will keep on uh, mixing the compactness and Hausdorffness. So this is only a starting point. So how does it prove that? You take a compact subset of, uh, of a Hausdorff space X, look at X minus A, I want to show that, that is open. So take a point X in X minus A, to each point inside A, okay, we can get an open subset UA, comma, another open set VA. UA is a neighborhood of A and VA is a neighborhood of X. UA intersection VA is empty. So this I do for all A, then I get an open cover for capital A. This open cover will have a finite subcover because A is compact. So let us assume that A is contained inside UA1, UA2, etc., UAN union. Correspondingly, you take VA1, VA2, VANN and intersect them. V is intersection of VA1, VA2, VAN. 
you should watch this game. Here I get a finite cover, there I get in intersection, corresponding things intersection. So this technique will be used again and again. Okay, so what is this V good for now? V is open. If X belongs to V, okay, V is open. Okay, why X belongs to V? Because X is inside each of V A I. V A O U X is all the time A I. Okay, the point is now V intersection A is empty. Why? Because take a point inside A, it will be in one of the U A I's. If one of the U A I's, then U A I intersection corresponds to V A I is empty. But this is even smaller. This is V is contained in the V A I. So U A I intersection V is empty. Okay, so that is why V intersection A is empty. That means this V is contained inside X minus A. So this we have done for each point of X minus A, therefore X minus A is open. All right. So every compact subset in a Hausdorff space is closed. This we knew in metric spaces. Right. The proof is exactly same except that we should not use open balls. There we are all the time using metric and open ball and so on. If you there also, you can use the same proof because this proof works in general. Okay, now we are in a position to derive one of the most important results in detecting homeomorphisms. It's quite applica application oriented result. <clears throat> yeah, a continuous bijection from a compact Hausdorff compact space to a Hausdorff space is a homeomorphism. The domain must be compact. The co-domain must be Hausdorff. A continuous bijection is a homeomorphism. What is missing? Either you should prove that this map is open map or this map is closed map. Okay. So what we shall prove is that this map is a closed map. Since there is a more general result, but not so popular as this theorem 4.8. But theorem 4.8 is a near consequence of that one. I will prove, I will state and prove that one. Okay, then you will see that this uh, while proving that you will get a proof of this one also. So this is 4.9, any map f from x to y from a compact space to a Hausdorff space is a closed map. You see, I am not in, uh, assuming injection, projection, nothing. Okay, so this is a more general result. What is it says? You take any continuous function from compact space to Hausdorff space, it's also a closed map. Further, if it's surjective, then it's a quotient map. This part we have already seen. Every surjective quotient, surjective closed map is a quotient map. Surjective open map is a quotient map. All that we have seen. Okay, the second part we have seen. So this one we want to show that why this F is closed map. Start with a closed subset in X, say F, okay, being a closed subset of a compact space, that was a remark uh, 3.58, whatever, it is compact, right, we have proved that one while studying compact spaces, and hence, by just the proved theorem here, this theorem, Compact subset of a Hausdorff space is closed. Okay. So, what I am going to do, I am going to do one more 
one more theorem, namely, image of a compact set is compact. So I have come to know why. So f of f is, is what? Is a compact subset of a Hausdorff space. So that is the end now by that theorem, which you have proved just now, which was the FF is closed. Okay, so I repeat by a result about compact subset, closed subset of a compact set, FF is compact, F is compact by a theorem on continuous functions that preserve compactness, FF is continuous, Y is compact, okay. But from theorem which we have proved just now, is Y is Hausdorff will play now, which was FF itself is closed. So closed set goes to closed set, F is a closed map, okay. So I repeat now, if it is surjective, a closed surjective map is a quotient map. If it is bijective, closed, we have proved, injective we have proved, okay, surjective we have assumed, sorry, injective and surjective we have assumed, therefore it is a closed map, therefore inverse image is open, that sort, inverse, image, inverse function is also a continuous and so on. So, so the proof of both of them are over now, okay. Here is a remark about mixing compactness and Hausdorffness. Suppose you have some set and three different topologies, one contained in the other, but not equal. Tau 1 contained inside tau 2, tau contained inside tau 2. Okay, so tau is trapped between tau n and tau 2 and equality doesn't hold. That is what you have to assume. Okay, they are distinct. Equality, there is equality, that's all. There is no more to say. Okay, suppose these are topologies on F and the middle one is compact as well as Hofdorf. Okay, you have mixed up to somewhat opposite nature uh, properties, the compactness is a smallness property and Hausdorffness is a largeness property. So you mix that them, something wonderful happens which justifies the largeness and smallness properties. Then tau 1 will not be, sorry, tau 1 will be compact but not Hausdorff. Why it is compact? Which is smaller than tau, which is compact. But it will not be Hausdorff. That is the claim. Similarly, tau 2 will be Hausdorff because it is larger than tau, but will not be compact. Okay. So, how to see this one? All that you have to do is start with x tau and take the identity map. Okay, or inclusion map, whatever it is, identity map. <laughs> this is the identity because x to x is the same set here. Okay, but topologies are different. If x is tau is larger than tau 1, the identity map will be continuous. This is compact. Okay, if this is Hausdorff, then what happens? This is sorry, this is all Hausdorff is already given. Okay. Tau 1 is, yeah, tau 1 is, we don't know. X tau is Hausdorff compact. So use the fact that this is compact. If this were Hausdorff, then this will be a homeomorphism, which means tau is equal to tau 1, but tau is not equal to tau 1. Similarly, x tau 2 to x, x tau 2 to x tau you take again the identity map okay this i know is Hausdorff. so if tau 2 is compact then this will be a homeomorphism but tau 2 is not equal to tau so this is not a homeomorphism 
okay so tau 2 fails to be compact you go above tau which is compact also everything above fails to be compact everything below fails to be hostile so this is like optimizing both of them whether such things exist always or not that is a completely different question okay on a given set such things may not exist one does know just like freshness hausdorfness is a largeness property so that's what we have just seen and a nice illustration here it is hereditary but not co-hereditary okay very easy to produce examples all through we will have such examples a product xj is hausdorff if and only if each coordinate space is xj so in this sense it is a productive property okay all these proofs are exactly similar to what we have done for freshness and they are straightforward there is no hitch in them only thing is you may not be able to see immediately why it is not co-hereditary exactly similar example same example will do of collapsing an open interval say 0 1 inside r okay the real line is hausdorff the quotient will not be hausdorff so so don't make the mistake that quotients are hausdorff okay quotients are very fussy so there is many things there are many things to do about the large the hausdorffness as such uh, in particular we are now going to mix up these properties with other things like compactness and so on and also we may go back to uh, linear some uh, metric space theory again and so on so at this point let us break so that's enough for today thank you